Winning the Delano Polo Award in Kanama 9 for the Gessler team is Arto Kekkonen. On the outside, Michael Sykes and Kanama 5, the defending winner of this race. However, we're not running on the same layout that we did last year. For the past two seasons, the Master Cup Series has run here at the Nukova Airport on a very short course. Very twisty, very bumpy. But this year, as you see above, we're running on a much longer layout with a very long straightaway. Uh, that is, uh, has two chicanes down the middle of it, turns 5 and 6, and turns 7 and 8. Davina Henton, the Kyala Grand Prix winner, crashed quite heavily in turn 7 uh, during qualifying, brought out a red flag. Unfortunately for Davina Henton, she really didn't, she only set one lap, so she lost her fastest lap as a result of bringing out the red flag. With no time to fall back on, Davina Henton, the Kyala winner, will start at the back of the grid. Also, the two power steering incorporated like Hoya, as driven by Kurt Pliskin and Greg Wood, had failed post-qualifying tech, um, post tech inspection. So more drama with Lycoya and the tech inspectors, and the Lycoyas back of the grid as well. And there are also seven cars in this race with the promoter's option, bringing this grid up to 41 cars. I don't think there's going to be nearly this many for Wales, but we have a very interesting looking grid uh, for this one. Dan, off to you. Thank you, Lance. Kekkonen, car number nine, gets a pretty good start there. As you see, uh, some people very strung out there, at least towards the back, but Roderick had a good start. Michael Sykes, Matthias Taub uh, seem to be sleeping on that start as Roderick makes a challenge in Arto Kekkonen as they come through the second corner. Uh, as Kekkonen asserts the lead so far, Roderick slides in behind. Roderick crossover, Michael Sykes on the attack in car number five. Right behind Michael Sykes, there you see uh, Yulina Sova in the red and blue Katsev and Matthias Taub, Kekkonen, Sweeps by to take the lead though, coming around turn four and down the really long runway to begin the run into the first chicane. Looking up at Michael Sykes, car number five, the red five. Roderick challenges Kakanen and Roderick goes a bit wide. He's gonna try to cut the, the rumble strips a little bit there. Side by side into the second chicane. This is where Davina Henson crashed in qualifying and that barrier back there as Arto Kakanen takes the lead in the nine car. Holding off a, a spirited charge by Roderick on the first lap. And uh, so Arto Kakanen, car number nine. He's got to make up some points on uh, Adrian Devereaux, who leads the championship. But as you may have noticed, Devereaux did not qualify very well. Neither did his teammate Luciano Savarol, who we're looking at right now. But Devereaux barging his way through right now. Uh, there was some contact between those two at Cariola, and Devereaux didn't have too many things to say about it. Uh, so, oh, we got contact between uh, Savarol and Ebenezer Quiggles Jr. in the white car. Great avoidance by Adrian Devereaux. As uh, Devereaux, very close to uh, being swept up into that, and that would have been a big crash in the first lap, and that would have put a huge dent in Adrian Devereaux's uh, ambitions to win his third straight Master Cup championship. Davina Henton, the championship leader, of course, starts deep in the field in the 11 car. We're on board now with Adrian Devereaux. He uh, didn't qualify all that well, as I mentioned earlier, and uh, I'm gonna watch as uh, there was contact behind him, and now watch this. Good, uh, good paying attention by Adrian Devereaux. May have gotten hit there, yeah, but uh, we do know that Carlos Danzello and Scott Stoidler got into it behind them. We're looking now at the 777 car of Ian Cooper, that bright orange car, orange and black car. We're watching the car in front of him, which is Donzello. Oh, Donzello just jams on the brakes a little too hard to get around that, and Scott Stoidler nowhere to go but into him, and I think one of the uh, Roos Autosport cars may have gotten into Donzello. Looking at Leonid Rodder, got a lot of good aerial shots for this one. Rodder trying to challenge Arto Kekkonen. He's way down in the championship, down in like 17th in points, but and he really needs to make up some ground. He's been very fast in contending for wins pretty much all uh, for most of the races, but uh, really just things have gone wrong for him. Horribly, horribly wrong for Roderick and Volpe as Michael Sykes takes over second and Yuli Nasova, who is uh, looking to win here on home turf, sitting in third in the Katsiv. Davina Henton up to 30, uh, up to 37, but uh, as I already mentioned, she's having a very, very rough week. Limited practice time has kept the links off, off the, off track. She had a couple of mechanical failures in practice, and as uh, Lance and I have both mentioned, that rather big wreck in qualifying. You saw the running order on the left. She's doing battle with one of the Toliatis. There's three of them in the field, and they all look pretty much the same. The 83 Toliati is an independent trophy contender. Okay, that's the. Uh, Golubov, the 85, uh, one of the uh, promoter's option entries. You have Jenny Kuznetsov in car number 8 is having his best showing all year. He's inside the top 10. He's been on the same pace as the leaders. Cats of Engineering has really brought out their A game for their home race. And Kuznetsov putting on a show for his sponsors and his countrymen. Cats have got their third car with Vladimir Simonov in the race on the promoter's option. But Kuznetsov has really had it over uh, Simonov uh, quite comprehensively. So... 
for those of you who may be wondering if Katza may be thinking of dropping Kuznetsov in favor of uh, their seemingly uh, 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 contracted for life uh, reserve driver of Vladimir Simonov. Uh, fear not, Kuznetsov, they said, will be in this car for the rest of the year, uh, and there is no concerns over his sponsor's funding or anything like that. And Kuznetsov um, is responding to that conf that uh, little uh, confidence Cats of Engineering has in him with a pretty good showing so far. I'd uh, keep an eye out for car number eight. Luciano Sabaral and uh, Scott Stoiler both came into the pit lane. Oh, contact between them on pit out. Scott Stoiler looked just squeezed Sabaral into the pit wall. I don't know what that was all about. That seemed a little unnecessary, if you ask me. And um, they want to look at that one after the race. Remember, Sabaral was given that active time penalty after the Cariala, uh, after the Cariala Grand Prix. That uh, sent him back just a little bit uh, on the results there. He needs a good run here. Melanie Clevno, car number 12, had a pretty good start in the uh, the second Lynx car. She uh, has had a much cleaner weekend, and this is actually Clevno's one-year anniversary in the series when she stepped into the uh, number the car, then driven, that was then a Majestic Motorsports team, so it's pretty much the same team that she made her debut with. Uh, she won the Team Europe race here last year and proceeded to get points in the Master Cup race. The car she drove last year at TM Europe won, uh, won the race here on the long course this year, and Clevno off to a good start here as well. Gaspar D'Souza in the double zero car has been one of the surprise packages in the early part of the year, but uh, he got a fantastic podium at Cariala, but he's got a puncture. He is uh, coming into the pit lane in the Clefer Media double zero car. Dennis Predikin in car number four is driving the uh, third two Tino. He's uh, usually run this race with a little bit of local uh, backing. Doesn't quite have the same level of funding as he has had in previous years, but Predikin still was showing up and doing a respectable job. Lewis Kingston in car number 17 has uh, got smoke building on the back of that car. That's definitely terminal. He goes out from a strong 13th. The uh, Kingston has had a couple good runs here in the past. Won the pole here once. Chris Allen in car 426, his first run of the year with this team, running in 24th place, the 426 Motorsports uh, car. Matthias Taub in that gold and black uh, with that interesting pattern there, the uh, space pattern there on that car. Going after Yulia Nasova in car number seven. Taub of Sweden has uh, really not surprisingly hasn't won a race, but he's been faster than Arto Kekkonen for the most part, at least in the early part of the year, but recently Kekkonen has stepped it up. There were some reports that Taub would get replaced if he didn't win a race this season, but uh, that might have just been Carl Richter's way of uh, getting the best out of Matthias Taub, trying the Cyril Volpe tactic. But uh, not sure if that's worked or not. Either, either, regardless, Taub having a good start to the year. Uh, here we have Zelda Ashby in the 55, fighting with Packer Carroll. Zelda Ashby has had the familiar 55. Pretty much that same paint job ever since she's been in the series. Uh, FPO has actually told the stewards to look at Packer Carroll for blocking, they think. Carroll is, uh, I think, the number two Volpe. He's gotten in the way a little bit. Bump, a little bit of bumper attack. Carroll swings it a bit wide. Ash oh, they make contact! And around goes Packer Carroll! Well, I guess that's FPO's way of, of uh, at least Zelda Ashby's way of, um, oh, Packer Carroll nearly sideswipes Adrian Devereaux. But I guess that might be Zelda Ashby's way of um, responding to the stewards' lack of uh, action as far as getting Packer Carroll to move out of the way. The car you are looking at has set the fastest lap of the race. Car number 22, four-time world champion Peter Short has set the quickest lap of the race, and he's had a very good weekend so far. In fact, Peter Short has been a lot quicker in practice than his qualifying effort suggested. Uh, the team seemed a little baffled as to why he didn't qualify higher than he did, but uh, Peter Short in this 22 car does have the pace, we believe, to contend for uh, a solid points day. And uh, given the Tremwell's reliability this season, I wouldn't doubt it. Here's Scott Bates in the 88 car, uh, uh, fighting with Yevgeny Kuznetsov. Scott Bates in the black and gold 88 car. Not exactly had the uh, the best of the season so far. The speed is uh, certainly there. It's just that um, some scary incidents like what happened at Cariala happened to um, have happened to him. There was a lot of uh, concern about Scott Bates' condition after that race, but uh, he came he escaped injury very very closely. The left front wheel assembly on that on the 88 car was absolutely demolished, and the stewards uh, reprimanded teammate Ian Cooper for not paying attention to Scott Bates entering the pit lane. Here is Leonard Rotter at car number four making a dive. Uh, no, Roderick thinks better than that. Roderick, car number four, four-time Master Cup champion, uh, doing battle with Michael Sykes and car number five, who's won uh, quite a few championships in various touring car categories, mostly in the UK. Michael Sykes, though, is adapted to Master Cup racing uh, very well, and he's won, he won here in the short course last year, 
in the red five, doing battle with Lena and Roderick, and Michael Sykes swinging it wide to try to get a better run. No, Roderick's got the uh, the advantage. It looks like Roderick takes over second place. So Lena Roderick up to second, the launch five of Michael Sykes back to third. As Adrian Devereaux in the Haas Manufacturing, car number one does battle with Peter Short in the Aperture, car number two. Adrian Devereaux up to 12th in that uh, car number one. So I would uh, look out for Adrian Devereaux. He has come flying through the field, and he's now hunting down Chris Davenport in the uh, that blue and yellow car number six. So Zach Duff is another guy having a very strong day. He's running back in uh, 15th, I do believe. That's his teammate Kevin Dwyer in that uh, light blue car right behind him. Duff in the 74 uh, qualified very well at Cariola, but didn't make it very far into the race. Uh, but looks like uh, this may be a sign of things to come because Zach Duff and Kevin Dwyer are both running very strongly. Make a Pasanen, one, one of the uh, cars in with the promoter's option. The only car, uh, the only promoter's option car for this race not entered by a Russian team. He's trying to fend off uh, Chris Davenport. Doesn't exactly do that. There's been some reports that Pasanen might replace Davenport in the six car if Davenport doesn't pick it up. But it looks like Davenport's responding to that and flying right past him. Greg Woodard, driving car number 41, surprisingly didn't qualify for Cariola, given uh, the uh, Lennard power under the hood of that Lycoya, but uh, the uh, engines that th they have are reportedly some of the best in the field, and Woodard, uh, I don't think there's anyone doubting his talent, but he's up to 29th, so he's made a pretty good start from the back of the grid. Here's Scott Bates and Yevgeny Kuznetsov that are s still battling very, very hard here. Whoa! Scott Bates hits the curb, nearly wipes it out, but great save by the Oklahoma driver, Scott Bates. Excellent car control to keep that thing from spinning out. Great save there, Mika Turvo, car number 0-2 up, up in 19th place. Surprisingly, Fintech was shut out of the Carella Grand Prix for the first time in that team's existence. Mika Turvo trying to respond very well here, but uh, he's stuck behind Peter Short at the moment. Davida Henson, car number 11, the Carella winner up to 22nd in the number 11 Lynx car. Henson flying her way through the field. Uh, despite not having a lot of practice, she's leading the championship as well. Adrian Devereaux, car number one. Oh, Devereaux slowing. Devereaux slowing on track, so problem for Adrian Devereaux. He's slowing on track. He got run out. Oh, what was that all about? Just got punted off the course by the 78 car. That is um, Vladimir Simonov, the third Katsev. Looks identical to, to uh, Kuznetsov's car, but that didn't seem like it was necessary at all. Matthias Tau pit the number 10 car on lap eight. The uh, number 10 Gessler and Lena Chernov, the first Ukrainian ever to start a Master Cup race, also into the pits on lap eight. Adrian Devereaux is on his way back to the pit lane. He's got something very seriously wrong with that car. And, uh, oh, whoa, he was slowing coming down in pit entry. There's pit in, and Ben Atkins in the 50 car just ran right over him. I don't know if a uh, Atkins just wasn't paying attention or what, but um, Devereaux signaled to come to the pit lane, and I guarantee you he was showing Ben Atkins a different signal as he went by. So uh, more problems for Adrian Devereaux in the one car. Melanie Klebno, car number 12, doing battle with Scott Bates in the 88 car, who is, uh, uh, looks like he's lost ground to, to uh, uh, Kuznetsov. Scott Bates and Melanie Klebno, two uh, drivers that I wouldn't be surprised uh, if they scored a win anytime soon. Klebno has been very, very fast all this season. Scott Bates has as well. But uh, I would keep a special eye on that 12 car. Melanie Klebno excels at this uh, kind of racetrack. Oh, we got a... Scott Sutherland, the 28 car, he's had a miserable day, and that comes to a, uh, well, to an end. Arto Kekkonen, car number nine, still leads the way. It's a pretty bumpy course, and uh, I'm kind of surprised you don't have more mechanical failures in this race. And uh, Arto, oh, did I just jinx it? Yes, Kekkonen is slowing. The number nine car, Arto Kekkonen, slowing on track. And uh, that doesn't, I don't see any smoke coming out of the back of that car, so he must have, like, a, he must have a puncture or something like that. Uh, because I see some debris all over the track, so yes, we're being told, uh, oh yeah, Arto Kakinen has a puncture in that car, he's going to need to bring it in, but he's a long way from pit in. Yulia Nasova, car number seven, the uh, blue and red Katsev, having a strong run in that car, and she's going to bring it into the pits right here. This is a scheduled stop, and you're still in the middle of the uh, pit stop cycle. Make a turbo, uh, I think that's, yes, that is turbo we're looking at, and, uh, one of the uh, the other Russo Autosport car that would be the uh, Lev Azarov car, the Carella Pole Sitter, as uh, Klevno and Scott Bates resume their battle for position. Klevno into the into the grass a little bit as Simonov leaves the pit lane. Scott Bates runs a little bit wide and Klevno takes the spot back. Thank you very much. So Melanie Klevno, car number 12, asserting uh, some dominance over Scott Bates at the moment. 
Michael Sykes and Leonard Roderick pit at the same time. This is, uh, we're running on lap 10s of this 28 lap race. Pretty long laps here as Ashby hits the pit lane. Scott Bates and Melanie Cleve now in. And here is Michael Sykes in car number five. With Arto Kakinen uh, falling well out of contention, he's still running, but with what he's way out of contention, Michael Sykes should assume the, uh, the lead of the race. The uh, number 42 car of Alessandro Rossini was dropping oil on the track. Um, and uh, coming into the pit lane, and he is going to retire from the race. He was running in a very strong 26th, but the Tutino, uh, the Tutino boy is not having a very good weekend so far. As you see the running order on the left, Melanie Cleveno, we're looking at running in third. Arto Kakinen running, still running, but you see two laps down just from that puncture. She's going to have to hold off a charging Yulia Nasova in that Katsev. The Katsev engineering cars do have the uh, same engines that the Hodges Walter boys do, but... Uh, uh, the Katzev car is just not necessarily as good as the one that uh, Hodges Walter Racing has. And uh, Katzev does, of course, they do a lot of di very different things with that car. But uh, it's one thing I'm noticing in this series, that most teams in the field, despite they're all, they're all making their own cars, they're all getting their engines from about three or four different places. Uh, you got some cars that would call Morel car uh, engines in the field, some of them with the Gesslers, like the Lynx car, which run, which uh, Melanie Klevno has. As the uh, Yulina Sova closes in, gets alongside Klevno. And Nasova goes by, and as I was mentioning, uh, of course, the uh, there's the Volpes that make their own engines that they, I believe the Tutinos are also using. But then you've got uh, uh, the Omeka cars, and most of them use the same engines that the uh, 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 car Pierre Short is using, who is in the back of the shot right there. We're looking at Davina Henton, car number 11. Henton having a decent run so far. She's going to have to hold off the four-time world champion, though, and that's not the easiest thing to do. Peter Short, car 22. I think Peter Short thinks he can get by Henton, but he's just saving his tires at the moment. Top 10 run so far for Yevgeny Kuznetsov, but uh, he's slowing on track, I believe. Yevgeny Kuznetsov, heartbreaking for Yevgeny Kuznetsov. That's a top 10 run he had going. Solid points, they the best run of his career. Contact with Ian Cooper and into Kurt Pliskin in the 16 car, who had had a great run as well. But heartbreaking for Kuznetsov, who's going to go out of the race after a fantastic drive. So a disappointing for a disappointing day for uh, two of the cats of cars anyways. Simonov well done the order. Um, Kuznetsov out, but Nasova still running as uh, Henson trying to hold off Peter Short. And here comes Greg Woodard into the frame as well. The Phoenix performance 41. Contact with Peter Short. Woodard forces his way through. Greg Woodard now having a run on Davina Henson in the 11 car. That, that Lennard power under the hood of that Lycoya is really working well as Woodard slides it in. Of course, Lennard and Lycoya are owned by the same company, so you might as well call it Lycoya power or Lennard power. It means the same thing. Davina Henton, the 11 car, hunting down Woodard now. Trying to, but also trying to hold off Peter Short, who is just lurking back there, waiting for a chance to pounce on Henton, who appears to be struggling with this car at the moment. Make a pa Oh, whoa! Make a pass on the... Uh, Car number 70 was leaving the pit lane on uh, the last round of pit stop. This is a replay here, and he got whacked from behind by Christian Hans in the second Manicor car. Not sure what that was all about, but the 70 car was very slow leaving the pits. Packer Carroll is in the uh, number two car. Whoa, that's Ian Cooper coming in from behind. Ian Cooper just took him completely by surprise. I don't think Packer Carroll expected Ian Cooper in that EFR journey uh, car to, the, uh, to really give him this much of a headache. Ian Cooper really having a good uh, good race so far as uh, Carroll's going to have to relinquish it to Ian Cooper. He relinquished the position. I don't think he figured that was going to happen. Arto Kekin and Steel Labs down faster than Craig Mummert. Oh, whoa! Whoa! Contact with Craig Mummert, Arto Kekinen. They weren't racing for position, but um, Kekinen did have the... Did, has was faster than him. That's kind of one of those... Uh, this is really one of those unfortunate situations where the back marker is fast. Yeah, Kekinen had the position and, and Mummer just turned right into him, so uh, sent him around and sent Chris Allen into the wall as well. Uh, no penalty were being told is uh, being handed out to Mummer, and that seems strange. Um, here's Davina Henton having a look on the uh, 41 car of Woodard. Oh, look, and it's Kurt Pliskin, Woodard's teammate. Great teammate right there. Kurt Pliskin held, holding up Peter Short to give Greg Woodard uh, give him a bit of breathing space over Henton. Henton runs it wide. Henton slowing! The Cariello winner, Davina Henton slowing on course. Davina Henton is going to go out of the race, it looks like. Uh, gearbox failure are being reported is being reported from the 11 pit. So Davina Henton out after a very, very impressive showing. Peter Short now 
unleashed. He doesn't have Henson holding him up, but uh, Peter Short and Woodard could both end up in the top 10 at this rate. Here's Ian Cooper in the 777 car. Now, you want to talk about being uh, called for blocking. Ian Co the Volpe team has told uh, Race Control to have a look at some of Ian Cooper's driving. But Ian Cooper, I don't think he's going to be able to hold off this. Um, oh, he's really playing it, playing uh, playing it very defensive there. As uh, I don't think he's going to be able to hold off the Volpe forever. Yeah, he's really using up everything he's got. He's using up the tires. It looks like Carroll's going to have a good run coming down through the first turn. Uh, slash start, finish straight as they come into the second turn, which probably should be called turn one right up here, yeah. Ian Cooper not able to hold off Packer Carroll Volpe, just a bit more powerful than what he has at his disposal, but he's having a great job, he's having a great run so far. So is his teammate, Scott Bates, who's running solidly in seven. So uh, the Team EFR guys, uh, Scott Bates and Ian Cooper, running seventh and ninth, having good days so far. Zelda Ash being the 55, uh, getting in the way of Yulina Sova. Of course, Ashby has that time penalty, so yeah, Ashby just lets Nasova go by, and really no point in fighting that. I think Ashby's kind of running her own race at this point. And uh, Yuli Nasova, car number seven, uh, looking in her mirrors a little bit at Ashby, but Nasova is the quickest car on the racetrack right now. So Yuli Nasova, car number seven, the last hope for the Cats of Engineering team could give them quite a bit to cheer about on home turf. So Nasova, I would look out for Nasova as she's pulling away from... Uh, Ash, whoa, Nasova uh, puts it off the track there a little bit. Mike, uh, that's uh, Matthias Taub, sorry, behind him in that, uh, behind uh, Ashby there. Lev Azarov in 14th place in the Rus Autosport, car number 82, the Cariola pole sitter, having a decent showing so far in that um, interesting looking car. Volpe Racing Team officials met with the driver of car 29, Chris Johans, after the Cariola Grand Prix. Uh, there's some speculation that Chris Johans might get a run in one of the Volpe's before the year is out. Uh, possibly in the number 14 car, which is the car that Volpe has had for the promoter's options, but there's been some mentions of Christian Hans in the number 2 car, but I think that's a little bit far-fetched. Matthias Taub and Ian Cooper uh, pitting at the end of lap 17. Uh, both of them have been having good runs, along with Zach Duff, who is running in 10th in the Juno. Zach Duff, uh, he's got the same engines that the American Launch Energy Racing Team has, but he's uh, not been able to do as much with them. Running in 10th place and doing a very good job as Duff pits. And it looks like Peter Short into the pit lane. See any other takers? Chris Davenport in the sixth car. Been having a bit of a miserable weekend, but he's making up for it in the race. Uh, and it looks like Troy Adams and Kevin Dwyer in, or they may have been Don Zello. Similar colors on there. The leaders are in on lap 18. We got uh, three leaders in. Sykes, Roderick, and Nasova. And Ashby coming into the pit lane as well in the 55, although Ashby not really one of the leaders. That's Melanie Cleave now. The 12, and we got Scott Bates and Packer Carroll. Oh no, Packer stays out. Packer Carroll in the uh, car number two is staying out and pushing his fuel a bit further. So, Packer Carroll, who uh, trying to really turn his reputation around, I'd say he's doing a pretty good job so far, despite what the 55 team might have to say about it. Lev Azarov in car number 82. There's smoke building up the back of that car, and um, that uh, interesting contraption that Roos Autosport has put together for Azarov that got the pole of Cariala out of the race after a solid points run. So very unfortunate for Lev Azarov, who had a good showing uh, today. Leonid Rodder, car number four, is uh, looks like he's uh, still sitting back in second, but he's uh, trying to chase Matthias Tau, but he's gonna have, but I think he's got Yuli Nasova breathing down his neck. There's Nasova right there, who's really reeled Roderick in. Nasova really caught Roderick. We weren't really able to see uh, where Nasova was in that last shot. She was just out of frame as uh, Leonid Roderick in that four card now has to worry about Nasova coming on the inside. Here comes Nasova in the cats. He's got to run on the inside. Down into turn nine. Nasova sweeps around the inside of Roderick. Is Roderick going to have anything to fight back? No, he doesn't. As now Nasova clears Roderick and is now trying to have a run at the leader. So Yuli Nasova up to second is on board with Ian Cooper. A little bit further back in the field. That's Zach Duff directly in front of him. Uh, coming just past pit in. This is the last turn. Cooper makes a move on the inside. Duff's off the track. Duff, oh, that was, oh, that was very close. But Duff goes around. I don't think he hit anything, but we're going to have to look another look at that one here. Uh, Zach Duff goes off the course. Ian Cooper had a wheel in on him. And Duff, to, I don't know what the officials are going to say about that one. But uh, Ian Cooper and Zach Duff made contact. I'd say Cooper may have had a position there. As we see the 
the uh, leaderboard on the left side as that spin by Duff and he, uh, after contact with Ian Cooper actually cost him ninth place to Zelda Ashby of course who made that position up by that time penalty uh, despite having that time penalty rather looking at Melanie Klebno in the 12th car to see where Ashby really is running on track Peter Short in car 22 continuing to impress today of course running back in the sixth position he's got Scott he's got the two team EFR boys right behind him and they are and they are catching fast so Peter Short who's in the top 10, which is where he belongs on pace. He's going to have to worry about these two guys, Ian Cooper and Scott Bates, who, they, of course, they collided at Cariola, and Cooper was reprimanded for that, for not paying attention. A uh, yeah, call that uh, you can, uh, I think you can sort of take that one way or the other. But anyways, Cooper trying to have a run on Bates. He doesn't quite have the position. Scott Bates is going to out. Oh, that's going to be close, but Bates is going to get him. Bates holds off, he holds off his teammate. No team orders a team EFR, but a lot of probably some of the hardest racing on the track. Uh, that's interesting. Yuli Nasova hunting down Michael Sykes in the seven car. She's trying to win on her uh, on so uh, it's a home race for n not only Nasova but for most of her sponsors and of course the team. There's Michael Sykes in front of her. We're closing into the end of the race. Ian Cooper and, and uh, Scott Bates resume their battle again. Scott Bates has been in a lot of really good battles for position here. So if you're a Scott Bates fan, and I know there's a lot of them out there, uh, this is going to be a lot of uh, good signs of Scott Bates racing people. Very hard, very cleanly, as Cooper's going to get uh, squeeze him off just a little bit, but Ian Cooper takes the spot. Very hard racing there. And now Peter Short. He's gotten past the uh, uh, Mika Pasan in the 70 car, who's been having uh, some troubles in pit lane. Of course, had that contact with Johans earlier. As a Melanie Klebno doesn't want anything to do with Zelda Ashby and lets Ashby go by after Ashby makes a, a pretty aggressive move, Klebno just lets the 55 car go right on by. Now, we got uh, on lap 23 of this 28 lap race, Yuli Nasova and Michael Sykes nose to tail with Sykes leading Nasova. Sykes goes a little bit wide and here comes Nasova in the 7 car. Nasova takes over the lead in the 7 car. Doesn't quite have uh, Sykes cleared though. Yes, now she does. Yuli Nasova into the lead of the race in front of a very partisan crowd here for the uh, 2013 running of the round of Russia. Michael Sykes sitting back there in second. And Roderick still holding station in third, but not able to close in the Volpe. Sykes now in the five car, the red five. Michael Sykes, the launch, red alert, Inglesby, really beginning to hunt down Yuli Nasova, driving the Katsiv uh, with uh, the Aratel Katsiv with Colt Morel power under the hood of that car. We're going to have to see now if Sykes has got anything for Nasova. He does. Michael Sykes, uh, after the second chicane, got a good run on Nasova. Here he comes. Michael Sykes comes right on oh, Nasova. I'm trying to fight back on the outside. Doesn't quite have enough. Gets on the, uh, the rumble strips over there. Michael Sykes is going to retake the lead one lap after Nasova took it from him in the same place. So Michael Sykes and Yuli Nasova, they look like both their favorite passing zone. Right there in turn nine, a very, very long sweeping turn nine. Nasova trying to, as it looks like Nasova may be laying back a little bit to see. Oh no, Sykes got it a bit wide on the last corner, and I thought Nasova was just going to save her tires a little bit and then have a run at him with uh, on the last couple of laps. But Nasova is really all over Michael Sykes. She really wants to lead this race, lead it badly to the end as Michael Sykes in the five car, making that red five a brick wall, a Metaphorical brick wall as we're looking back at Luciano Savaral in car number three. Uh, the Kurt Kliskin in that 16 car is way, way off the lead lap. It, he's several laps down, several seconds off. The, oh, contact! As Luciano Savaral wanted nothing to do with Pliskin, and he just bunted Pliskin out of the way. So uh, Pliskin's been, uh, I guess Pliskin, uh, he's uh, been several seconds off the pace, but yeah, I, that's... Uh, well, not the. That's sort of what Kurt Pliskin did to Benoit Fuchler, actually, during the Carrella Grand Prix. Vladimir Simonov, the 78 car, bails for the pit lane with just a few laps remaining. Didn't want to hold up the battle for the lead. That was an interesting call by the Cats of team to bring Simonov in. But looks like they're letting Nasova and Michael Sykes race it cleanly for the win. As Ian Cooper has broken away from Scott Bates and is now making a run on Peter Short. Peter Short's gonna have to look his. Gonna have to watch out because here comes Cooper in that bright orange car on the inside. Peter Short holding him off so far. Ian Cooper makes the dive. Peter Short, does he have anything on the exit of nine? I don't think so. Ian Cooper takes over the spot. As now, Michael Sykes and Yulina Sova have caught the lap car of Ben Atkins in the Tutino. 
the uh, 50 car, who of course, uh, he's under investigation for that incident with Adrian Devereaux and Pitt in, but I'd be surprised if anything became of that. Anyways, Michael Sykes and uh, Yuli Nasova don't have too many laps to go. Melanie Klebno in the number 12 car has been caught by Packer Carroll in the much more powerful Volpe. Uh, the Volpe really has been doing very, very well here on this track. The Lynx car not quite as strong. Uh, here comes Packer Carroll on the inside. He really wants that position. He really wants fourth. Carroll on the inside and Packer Carroll on the inside of Melanie Klebno and takes the position back. Takes the position away from Melanie Klebno, I should say. And now we're at two laps to go here back at the battle for the lead. Yuli Nasova and Michael Sykes are nose to tail as they come now to take the white flag. This is one lap to go here for the 2013 round of Russia. Yuli Nasova and Michael Sykes. Does Nasova have anything for Sykesy? There she comes, slips in the inside. They play tag, bumper tag. Michael Sykes off the course just a little bit. Nasova all over the back of the five car now. Michael Sykes holding her off as much as he can, but now I think he's get, he doesn't have enough momentum coming into this corner. Here comes Nasova on the inside. Yuli Nasova takes over the lead of the race in the number seven, Aratel Katsiv. Nasova to the lead. Michael Sykes trying to fight back, coming down into the first chicane. Does he have enough? No, he doesn't. I don't think Nasova's going to get it, I think, coming out of the first chicane. And Yuli Nasova holds on. And, and she's going to take the lead away from Michael Sykes, but we still got to get through turn nine in the second chicane, where these two cars have really, really liked to do uh, to do battle. But Michael Sykes does not appear to be close enough to Nasova now, with just a couple corners to go. Yuli Nasova, she has only led two laps, uh, one other lap before this one. She's coming around the final corner, and Yuli Nasova, with Michael Sykes giving it everything he's got to try to catch up, but Yuli Nasova wins in front of her home crowd. Nasova wins the round of Russia in front of a very partisan uh, crowd with Michael Sykes second and Roderick completing the podium, and Packer Carroll in the second Volpe finishing a strong fourth with Melanie Klebno celebrating her one-year anniversary in the TM Master Cup Series with a fifth place. Ian Cooper, Peter Short, and Scott Bates all had very good runs, along with Zach Duff, who recovered to finish in ninth. Matthias Taub rounds out the top ten. Zelda Ashby, despite the penalty, 11th is a solid points day. Kevin Dwyer, good run for him. Chris Davenport, the best of the rookies. Chris Johans of the Manicor, pat on the back for him. We haven't really said enough about the former Arla champion's efforts in that very underpowered Manicor car. Mika Turvo gets some points for Fintech. That'll help his uh, uh, final bid for the Independence Trophy here. Leonid Chernov in car number 80, the uh, Ukrainian driver. First Ukrainian driver to start a Master Cup race. His first start and his first points. You may notice we have two Tolyatis in the points with Mikhail Veselov and Vitaly Karpenko, 18th and 20th, flanking Gaspar D'Souza in the Black Diamond Double Zero, who is uh, helping his championship bid. And who would have thought to say that Gaspar D'Souza might be competing for the championship? Speaking of which, let's have a look at the Drivers' Championship. Despite neither of them scoring, Henton and Devereaux are still 1-2 in the championship, and Michael Sykes and Arto Kekkonen beginning to close in. Melanie Klebno, Gaspar D'Souza... Uh, Zelda Ashby and Matthias Taub all have uh, positioned themselves as realistic championship contenders, and despite that lead by Davina Henton in the 11 car, I think there's still a couple of guys uh, that we have in the top 10 in the championship that could make some very serious charges later on. And let's not count out Peter Short, Luciano Savarol, or Leonid Roderick, who moved up to 14th in the championship. And of course, Scott Bates in that 88 car has been very, very quick lately, and I think there's a couple of races he might be able to win. Uh, coming up this year. And a quick look at the Independence Trophy Championship. Mika Turvo has used up all four of his Independence Trophy uh, attempts, and he has fallen just shy of Ike Durbin in the 98 car, but the Toyati, Vitaly Karpinko, sits third in the Independence Trophy Championship. He has one race still to go, so it looks like the Terror International Motorsports driver, Ike Durbin, might just have to look out for the Toyati of all cars, and who would have thought that at the beginning of this season? Carlos Donzello still has one race left to go for the Independence Trophy in the 03 car. But I would keep an eye on Ben Huron in the 43 car, the Abbey Engineering Huntley. Ben Huron's home race is the next race of the TM Master Cup Series Championship, the Round of Wales, the Launch Energy Motor Park. <laughs>